Let's assemble the castle. Here's the parts you'll need. Keep in mind that sheet metal screws have pointed ends and machine screws have flat ends. This is the easiest way to tell them apart. The lengths can easily be measured to ensure that you are using the correct screw. Lay the castle sides flat on a work surface so that they mirror each other. The taller straight edges will be at the back of the loom and the shorter curved edges will be at the front. Place a front shaft guide on the inner side of a castle side. Be sure that you are using the front shaft guide, which has holes that are further apart. From the outer side of the castle, insert a 3 quarter inch sheet metal screw into the top hole of the guide. Attach the guide through the top hole only for now. Repeat for the other shaft guide on the other castle side. Place a rear shaft guide on the inner side of a castle side with the holes at the top of the guide. This one has holes that are closer together. From the outer side of the castle, insert a sheet metal screw into the top hole of the guide. Again, only the top hole for now. Repeat for the other rear shaft guide on the other castle side. Set one castle side upright with the front edge facing you. Be sure that the pulley brace with its small holes are on the upper side, facing the rear of the castle sides. The pulley axles will be on the upper side of the brace. Insert the pulley brace into the slot on the side. Then place the other castle side onto the pulley brace oriented with the shaft guides facing in and the front of the loom towards you. Set the lever board in place between the castle sides with its curved edge at the front. Tilt the lever board so that the front holes align with the holes in the castle sides. Attach the lever board to the castle sides using four barrel nuts and four two inch machine screws. Tighten all the screws firmly.
Place the beam extensions on the outer side of the castle with their widest edges at the back of the loom. Insert one and a quarter inch sheet metal screws into each hole in the beam extensions. Then attach to the castle side and the shaft guides. Each shaft has a fixed side with the heddle bars installed and a free side with a dimple on the outer edge and two larger holes on the inner side. You'll install 75 heddles on each shaft, then attach the free side and a lever cord. The heddles come in uncut bundles of 100, tied with pairs of red ties at the top and bottom. Insert the heddle rods of one shaft between the pairs of red ties at the top and bottom. Then, undo the red ties and count off 25 heddles. Then cut apart the two groups. Reattach the red ties to this group of 25. Take off the set of 25 and set aside. Then attach the free side to the heddle bars. Cut the heddles apart at the top and bottom. Be careful to only cut the heddle loops and not your finger. Cut just a few loops at a time so you don't miss any loops or cut in the wrong place. Repeat for two other shafts. Now install the bundles of 25 cut heddles on the fourth shaft. Divide the heddles into groups of 37 and 38, making a space between these groups. Install a lever cord on the heddle rods of each shaft. Wrap one end of the cord around the heddle rod. Find the first complete hole in the end of the cord, then run the other end through it. Tighten the loop around the heddle rod.
Orient the shafts with the free sides on the same side with the lever cords on the upper heddle rods. From the back of the castle, slide the first shaft into place. The shaft at the front of the castle, shaft one, will hang from the rightmost lever. The lever cords for these shafts feed through the pulley slots and around the pulleys, starting in the middle of the pulley brace. Feed the lever cord for shaft one through the slot closest to the front of the pulley brace, up and over the pulley in the middle, under the pulley to the right, and up through the slot. Feed the lever cord through the rightmost hole in the lever brace. For now, let the cord dangle off the front of the lever brace. Feed the lever cord for shaft two through the frontmost hole in the pulley brace. Then the second hole from the right in the lever brace. For now, let the cord dangle off the front of the lever brace, making sure it doesn't slip out of the hole. Feed the lever cord for shaft three through the rearmost hole in the pulley brace. If the lever cords will not feed easily through the holes, use a tip of a paper clip or a safety pin to push them through from underneath. Then the second hole from the left in the lever brace. For now, let the cord dangle off the front of the lever brace. Feed the lever cord for shaft four through the slot closest to the back of the pulley brace up and over the pulley in the middle, under the pulley to the left, and up through the slot. Feed the lever cord through the leftmost hole in the lever brace. Connect all lever cords to the screws on the levers. Use whichever holes in the lever cords set all shafts at roughly the same height. They should be about level with the tops of the shaft guides. You can adjust the height later if needed. If your Cricut sits on a Cricut stand, remove it and set the loom on a work surface with the front of the loom towards you. If your Cricut does not sit on a stand, set the loom on a work surface with the front of the loom towards you. Remove the Cricut cross brace and all its hardware, storing these parts safely for converting your Cricut back to rigid heddle weaving. At the rear of the loom, remove the Cricut back beam. Set aside the beam and two sheet metal screws for later. Set the quartet castle inside the loom with its front at the front of the Cricut and the beam extensions at the back of the Cricut. Align the holes at the lower edges of the castle sides with the holes in the loom sides. Add the larger washer to each hex head bolt. Set the quartet cross brace inside the castle, aligning all holes. Place a barrel nut into one of the holes in the cross brace. The line in the barrel nut should be perpendicular to the side of the loom. Insert the hex head bolt with washer into the side of the loom and tighten. If you are using your quartet without a stand, tighten all the way. If you are using a stand, only tighten enough to hold the cross brace in place. Repeat for the other holes in the cross brace.
attach the back beam to the quartet beam extensions using the parts you removed earlier. The pivot beater should curve like the letter C when viewed from the side. Its sides attach at the bottom to the castle sides. The bottom of the reed swings freely and doesn't attach to anything. When the beater sits upright, the top rests against the castle sides with the rubber feet on the back. Attach the rubber feet to the beater top with half inch sheet metal screws. Lay the beater bottom flat on a work surface with the reed notch facing up. Insert the 5.5 inch hex bolts through the underside of the beater bottom. Place the reed in the notch of the beater bottom. Place the beater top onto the hex bolts. Attach the hex bolts at the top of the beater with the thumb nuts. At the right and left beater sides at each side of the beater top, the top has rubber feet on its back and the beater bottom doesn't attach to the sides. The grooves in the sides should face each other. Align the beater brace to the beater sides. The front of the brace will be flush with the sides and the back will extend about a quarter inch. Attach the beater brace to the beater sides with three quarter inch sheet metal screws. Now is the time to test the beater. Try swinging it. It should move freely. Set the pivot beater on the castle sides, aligning the holes in the beater sides with the holes at the front of the quartet. Insert a one and a quarter inch machine screw through the holes Then add the small washer and a lock nut. Tighten the lock nuts securely. Then loosen them by a quarter turn so the beater can move freely.
If you're using a Cricut stand, you can now set the Cricut and Quartet onto the stand. The hex head bolts attaching the cross brace will sit in the slots in the stand legs. The washers should be placed on the outer side of the stand legs. Set the loom at the angle you prefer and tighten the bolts securely into the barrel nuts in the cross brace. Thanks so much for joining us to learn about the Cricut Quartet. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at info at Thank you and happy weaving.